The sun is just coming up. It's only 7.30 in the morning, and I only have one grave site that I was hoping to find here today, and I believe going by the GPS on her Find a Grave Memorial page that she's laid to rest right here in this section, and it seems to be the only section that's being watered this morning. Well, it's funny. I decided to go ahead and just, I looked on the GPS and it looked like it was really close to where I'm parked. And it turns out her grave is right here. This first grave that you see right in front of my car. She's right here at the street. She's the first grave site next to the street. So I lucked out after all. Now the sun is in my eyes, but that's okay. It feels good. It's pretty cold here this morning in Colma, California. I'm here at Cypress Law Memorial Park. This is a large cemetery, and it's on both sides of the street. This cypress lawn is on the west side of the street. And Isora Rhodes Armstead is buried right here, about halfway up the hill in the center of the cemetery. And the GPS was accurate and brought me right here to her gravesite. Very easy to find. If her name doesn't sound that familiar to you, I'm sure her famous song will. It's Raining Men, that iconic gay anthem, but you don't even have to be gay to love it. I, I know lots of people who love it and have absolutely no idea that it's something of a gay anthem within the gay community. <laughs> it's just a really fun song and super mega hit. The song was written by a gay man, Paul Jabara and Paul Schaefer. And until coming here today, I didn't even know that they had written the song for the two women who sang it. They were known as Two Tons of Fun. Singer Marsha Wash was the other half of the singing duo and now that I think about it, they started out as backup singers for disco icon Sylvester. Then they were known as Two Tons of Fun. And then I believe after they went out on their own, their name changed to the Weather Girls. And that's when they had the big hit, It's Raining Men. And that was back in 1982, just kind of at the end of the disco era. I mean, the 1970s, when I think of disco, I think of the 1970s and early 1980s. So let's walk over and get a closer look at her headstone, and hopefully my tennis shoes won't get completely soaked in the wet grass here. Isora was born on July 6, 1942, in Galveston, Texas, and died from heart failure up here in nearby San Leandro, California on September 16, 2004. And sadly, she was only 62 years old. Her singing partner, Martha Wash, is still alive and is 69 years old. Together, they released five albums, but It's Raining Men was their biggest hit. It was the number one dance hit here in the U.S., and it was also a top 10 hit in many other countries around the world. In 1983, the song received a Grammy nomination and is considered to be one of the greatest songs of the 1980s. The co-writer of the song, Paul Schaefer, is now 74 years old. And you may remember him as the musical director, band leader, and sidekick to David Letterman on the Late Night with David Letterman show. The song's co-writer, Paul Jabara, died from AIDS on September 29, 1992 in Los Angeles at the age of 44. He was born in Brooklyn, New York, and is now buried at Brooklyn, New York at Greenwood Cemetery. One of the reasons I love visiting grave sites is that I always learn something new. If I hadn't have visited Isora's grave site, I don't think I would have ever learned about the gay history tied to this classic song, or even her connection to gay icon Sylvester. This week I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to subscriber Nancy Elward. Thank you, Nancy, once again for your very kind and generous donation to this channel using YouTube Super Thanks. It's very appreciated. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And thank you to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe. And until our next trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.